It's nearing two months since Apple released the Mac Studio, and we wanted to give you an updated list of the top issues that plague this machine for those of you guys that have bought one to watch out for and those that want to get one to make sure you know what you are getting. And we have gotten some new issues as people have used them and as we have tested them. Now, I'm also going to cover the Studio Display that we absolutely love, just like the Mac Studio. That one is great, but we wish some things were different. Now, let's go ahead and jump right into it. Now, the first one is the coil whine or high pitch noise issue. Now, personally, we have gotten lucky with this, but a lot of people have been talking about it, talking in our comments on forums. This is where you have this high pitch, quiet, but annoying sound that's in the background. Now, this was very prevalent in a lot of Dell XPS laptops, some graphics cards, but this in fact is not coil whine in the Mac Studio. It is actually the fans. There are dual fans with both of the Mac Studios, the M1 Max and M1 Ultra, and they run all the time, even though the systems are extremely cool running, they're running about 1300 RPMs. Now, it seems like some of these are having a high pitch sound or whine. Now, some people have actually gotten around this by using some fan control software like TG Fan Pro, which I'll link down in the video description, to lower the RPM down to about 1100, and that makes it a lot better or ramp it up slightly if you want to. Now, these machines should be completely silent 99% of the time. They are amazing. Now, in reality, what you could do is you could get it swapped out uh, for another uh, machine, but I'll talk about that in just a bit. Now, the second issue is the system not booting up or crashing. Now, we actually had this happen to ourselves probably about two, three days after we got the base model it would not boot and we would just get an SOS flashing light. Now it was working just fine, it was connected and then all of a sudden it crashed and wouldn't turn on. Now some people are actually getting this when they just open it up out of the box and they're trying to set it up and it won't turn on. It's a software issue, I think it's with the older version of the Mac OS. So you can't actually fix this if you have a Mac running the latest software using Apple's configurator tool that will revive your Mac. And so it's not too terribly hard to do, you can just follow all the steps, but it does take some time and it is annoying. Now, the next thing is just the fact that these aren't available because I'll tell most of you guys, don't deal with the fan issue, don't have to fix it if that comes up, just go get it swapped out. But in many cases, these are sold out until July or even up to three months if you go in and do a custom order. That just shows how popular these are and of course there's chip shortages and things like that. So if I had these issues, I would just try to work with it for now and then if you have a fan issue, well, just wait and then when they come in stock, then reach out to Apple and say, hey, we're having this issue, can you guys please fix it or get me a new one? And I know they've done that in the past with previous Macs. Now the next issue are the quad encoders in the M1 Ultra. Now we wanted to wait a bit before we talk about this for us to get software updates and then we did we got the latest version of Final Cut that Apple finally released took them forever DaVinci Resolve they released version 18 Premiere was updated and this is still an issue now we personally got the Ultra as our main video editing machine because we want super fast export times but unfortunately when you look at these charts the export times are the same if you're looking at Final Cut and DaVinci Resolve and also Premiere Pro there's a slight slight difference but it's should be twice as fast or at least close. Now we have some insider information that basically told us, yes, technically Apple is right what they announced on stage. They do have quad encoders, but those quad encoders can't really do anything because the limitations are the codecs and the way the software works and the way that Mac OS is written. Future versions of Mac OS will get better and will have some improvements, but that's gonna be at least half a year away. And then even still, it won't be twice as fast. There'll be some small improvements. So they were right, they're quad encoders, but if you're buying this higher end model like we did, just to export videos faster, well, you guys see a lot of times the speeds are identical even if you spend twice as much or more. Now the next one ties into this and that's software optimization. We've been talking about this ever since the M1 chips came out a year and a half ago and some things were working pretty well, but we now know that this is a much bigger, deeper issue. Apple released their latest version of Final Cut and almost nothing changed. And in fact, Final Cut is being beaten out by DaVinci Resolve, which is crazy. Now that we have these high performing chips, 
those software optimizations or lack thereof, they're a lot more noticeable. And if Apple is struggling with it, well, that says a lot. And with this, the M1 Ultra itself is showing us a lot of issues on the graphics side. On the CPU side, it's a lot easier. We're getting some nice gains in Lightroom, in Logic. That's the same thing where the M1 performed really well and stuff got optimized quick for CPU. But with these higher cores, with these ultra chips, we're seeing that in many cases, the 64 core isn't much faster than the 48. And with that, the 48 is not twice as fast as the 24 like it should be. We've had numerous software engineers tell us that optimizing for ARM from Intel x86 is a piece of cake compared to doing the necessary optimizations to get the M1 Ultra to work at its proper capacity. Now, DaVinci Resolve has done a killer job. They were actually the first ones, even beating Apple, to have support for ProRes RAW, decoding with the afterburner. You see their encoding speeds for regular video. They're much faster than Final Cut, the latest version. And even they are not fully optimized yet. And the way we know this is because the graphics is actually underclocking itself because we're not getting data the proper way and there's a big bottleneck. And basically we just have a funnel where it's going through this little, you know, small bottleneck of bandwidth and then the graphics card is slowing down using not a lot of wattage, which we've shown you guys. Now, the latest version of DaVinci Resolve, the 64 core model, will actually run at about 1100 megahertz instead of the proper 1300. But Final Cut on the other hand, still runs at about 752, showing that even Apple can't optimize for these high-end GPUs. And we've seen with Xcode's tool that's for like Blender, for example, half the time it's sitting there and the graphics card is not doing work, even though it shows us that it's 100% usage. So there's so much extra processing and things that need to get done to fix this. And it's gonna take a lot of time. And Apple, for their later chips, their newer updated ones, they're actually changing the way they're making this so that you don't have to be as optimized so you can get better performance on a hardware level just because of how difficult it is to make these changes and optimize for Apple's high-end graphics chips. It is because of this that we are actually going to stick to the M1 Max, even though it's not perfectly optimized yet, the balance is really good. And because the quad encoders can't be used, it's not a big deal for us. And the machine is incredibly fast. Check out our full review if you guys wanna get more info. Now let's go ahead and shift to the studio display. This thing is expensive, but the quality is top notch. The speakers are amazing, the mic is amazing, but I have a couple issues with it, not including the price tag. The first thing is the webcam. Apple said that there was a software bug that that was making the webcam look absolutely terrible, but they just released an update. We tested it out, and yes, it is better in some ways, but not in all ways. Now, the framing, they actually put effort into making it work properly instead of having way too much headroom, but there's now way too much contrast, and the actual detail went down because they're adding extra contrast and a lot of extra denoising. Now, what really blew my mind is when I compared it to my iPhone 13 Pro, Pro using the standard camera, using the camo app, which I'll also link below, the quality difference is absolutely insane. Now, I know what you guys are gonna think, hey, this is an iPhone camera, you know, it's way more expensive than Apple's ultra-wide center stage that digitally crops in, which is why it looks so bad. Well, Apple now, they're selling the camera module for $111 and then giving you a chunk of money back when you send back the original. And that rate is actually flat rate. Even for like an iPhone SE, they'll charge you that and then give you a lot of the money back when you send it. So uh, there's definitely enough room. We only need one good camera. It's running the same software so it could use it. Why would Apple just not put in a normal camera that looks great instead of having that cropping ability, which how many people need that in a desktop display uh, and having this quality issue. So it definitely is a bummer and it definitely is not only software. And if you don't believe me that it is the hardware, check out this comparison with the iMac Pro from 2017. Look at that quality difference. The software fixed studio display from 2022 and that iMac Pro from 2017. It is just crazy. Now that leads me into my last one. And this is something that I would absolutely love. I know Apple won't do it, 
but to allow this expensive display to have more capabilities. I would have loved to be able to even run a web browser or iOS apps on it because it actually has a full iPhone 11, not even the iPhone SE because it has 64 gigs of storage and four gigs of RAM built in running the latest iOS, but it's not doing anything with it. And previously you could buy an iMac for 1800 bucks, often 1600 on sale. That's a full computer built in with a 5K display. So if Apple would have allowed you to run at least iOS apps or iPad apps on it without a display plugged in, that would make it such a better value proposition and make it such an awesome tool for people that want to have a display set up like an iMac at your desk so you can do basic web browsing tasks, which people spend most of their time on, and then plug in a laptop or whatever else for heavy tasks. That would have been amazing, just like the Samsung M8 that we recently showed off. So the hardware is built in, the software is there, but Apple's not doing anything with it, including having a pretty terrible webcam also, which is crazy. So that would have just been amazing, but of course, they don't wanna do that because that'd be too good of a value. So there you guys go. We really like the studio display, the quality. The Mac Studio also is amazing, especially the base model for the value that you get. I would say still pick one up if you enjoy it. Um, if, you're, if it's gonna do a good job for you, consider buying a MacBook instead maybe if you're buying a base model. I have a full video on that over there with a lot of reasons why that might be a better value. Click above to subscribe if you guys wanna see more videos. This has been Max and I'll see you in the next video.